Did your parents know that starting you in chess at a very young age was important and could develop you? I mean, I realize it was very much prized in the former Soviet Union as a sign of intellectual power and, and greatness. And that was one of the reasons that the USSR really loved to have all the chess champions. But is that what made your parents push you into it? Or did you show a natural aptitude right from the beginning or both? No, it was accidental. So you're right stating that chess in, in the USSR was a very important ideological uh, tool. Um, it's, um, it was uh, supported by the state to demonstrate the intellectual superiority of the communist regime over the decadent West. So I, of course, I benefited from, from this state support, but it started uh, at one of the winter evenings at home. I was five and a half getting close to six years old and uh, watched my parents uh, trying to solve a chess puzzle from a local newspaper because all our newspapers had small chess section. And I was immediately fascinated by this chess, by the pieces. I didn't know chess or what, just the wooden pieces. And I watched them moving these pieces and then I learned how to make the moves. And, uh, and uh, to their surprise, so I, I made even just, you know, an offer. So what's it's, I was, uh, um, quite uh, uh, aggressive in, 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 in pushing the idea. And so, and my father immediately recognized that I had a, a different mindset because all um, members of my Jewish side, my father's family, so they were uh, all musicians, except my father. He graduated the violin class, but he ended up as being an engineer. That's how he met my mother, who was also an engineer. Um, and uh, his um, last decision in his life, because tragically he died when I was seven, so I'm from, mm. uh, from cancer, uh, just at age 39. So the decision that he made uh, telling my mother that we had to send him to a chess, chess club, not, not a music school. And um, that's how I you know, entered the chess um, network in the Soviet Union at age uh, seven. And uh, I climbed very, very rapidly on this, on this chess ladder. So by age 10, I was uh, already one of the strongest juniors in my, um, in my city, Baku, which was the fourth largest city in the Soviet Union, or, or just all the way down south. Um, and as you mentioned, at age 12, I, I was the junior champion under 18. So that uh, that's, was the best indication of a of, uh, uh, great future uh, laying ahead of me. So you became a celebrity uh, within the Soviet Union. I mean, people must have known you on the street. You became a worldwide celebrity. But what was that like for you? Did you know that you were a celebrity, that you were famous, that you had power that few had? Look, uh, chess was very popular in the Soviet Union and uh, being world champion. And uh, I, I became world champion, as you mentioned, uh, in 1995 at age 22, uh, uh, gave me a unique um, Stature. Uh, uh, also, there was a time of, of a big change in the Soviet Union. Uh, uh, Gorbachev uh, took over and uh, he talked about openness and about changes uh, uh, in, in, in Soviet domestic policy, though they were much less than people thought in the free world, but still it's, it was a, like a fresh wind. So after years of, of stagnation under Brezhnev, um, and his and his uh, followers, there uh, were uh, two two short uh, short lived uh, uh, heads of the Communist Party in Dropov and Chernenko. So Gorbachev was very very different, um, and uh, uh, I uh, had a sense that uh, my new status, my the pro this prominence, had to be used to help my country to get better. Um, not that I had many ideas about democracy and how we can achieve it in Russia. But I already had a pretty good idea about the rest of the world, because my first trip abroad was in 1976, when I was just 13, to France to play a world championship under 16. And then in 1977, I had another trip to France to play just the same event a year later. Uh, and uh, I came back knowing that, you know, there was something wrong in the Soviet Union, because I could immediately see the difference. And I, um, I felt that, you know, we had to, we had to make changes to, um, to turn our country into something more pleasant 
because I, I mean, I had to play by the rules. I just, I wanted to become world champion. But mm. in the back of my mind, I thought that the moment would come when I could use my, my um, acquired glory to, in, to help others to rally uh, 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 for the support of democracy. And that's little what did I did. You, little did that Gary Kasparov know that, you know, within what, 30 years, you would be on allegedly on an assassination list from the Russian president who, you know, is said to ha- want to target you because you've been so outspoken in pushing for democracy. That's and critic and critical of him. I mean, that's it's crazy to think of, you know, it's not something anybody over here would ever worry about with respect to a U.S. president, uh, but it just underscores the difference between how our two countries have chosen to live or are living. Um, one of the things I've heard you talk about in playing the chess, which I thought was very interesting, because I, I don't know anything about chess, but you're fascinating, is how much exertion goes on during, especially, you know, well, for you, every match is big, but during the big matches in particular, the number of calories that are burnt, the number of stress that you're under, that there have been studies of this. Because, you know, I, I see two guys sitting playing chess. I don't I don't think of exertion. I think of m- mental taxation, but I don't think of exertion. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's, it, it, it seems very innocuous when, as you said, you know, two guys sitting there just, you know, in front of each other playing chess. You know, it's, uh, or it could be, you know, two girls or just uh, a boy and a girl playing chess. But it's a huge pressure because uh, the mental pressure uh, just, you know, somehow affects your body. And uh, if it's a long match, uh, uh, when I say long match, it, it, you play many games. So 12 games, 14 games against the same opponent. When I played Anatoly Karpov, we played 24 games. Mm. So that's, uh, that took weeks. So with all the, uh, uh, with the, uh, with the rest days, every second day was a rest day. So, uh, we, you know, we played for two and three months, two or three months. And our first match, actually, it was unlimited number of games. We played for nearly five and a half months. Wow. So uh, it's it, and it's not just a game. It's the the several hours you spend at the board. It's about preparation. It's about living under this pressure, because you know you go uh, just you know um, you go back to bed, and you're still thinking about you know the the moves you made in the previous game or the the moves you will make in the next game. You right. eat. You still you know your mind is still very much you know just t- it's very tense, and it's it's. You know, the way I played, you know, I just couldn't escape uh, from from the images of, of of chess pieces. And and I was always working. For me, the whole tournament, uh, the whole match, uh, 10 games, 12 games. So this is two weeks, a month. It was always like one event. So that's why um, um, it was it was a physical, physical exertion. And um mm-hmm. I burned calories. I lost weight, but but I did a lot of physical exercise. So the reason I stayed on top for nearly 20 years. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.